the following broadcast is brought to you by Mad Dog TV, a dog Fabian Entertainment Limited company. Good afternoon everybody, I'm doing a random stream. Uh, welcome to uh, Sellers in Place. Um, Elite Dangerous is again the gameplay um, after last night's return to Elite Dangerous, which wasn't exactly planned. Uh, the interaction with uh, Graham, DJ Truthsayer and his stream was unplanned until about an hour before we started streaming. Uh, so I didn't actually do the planned stream that I had, well the, the anticipated stream that I had planned. So I'm kind of going to do that today so a solo stream today to kind of make up for the the relative chaos and talkiness of last week's stream and do an actual bit of gameplay um, i've got a bit of spare time this afternoon and i wanted to try something out so basically what i'm going to try and do is as mentioned on last night's stream um the road to riches which is basically um a method of trying to get some money quite quickly and there's a way of doing that from exploration. Now, I, I thought that there'd be some trade routes we could use, and I have actually done some research into trade routes and different ways of getting money, and there are ways of doing it. But obviously, I asked the question last night, if I want to get a bit of money quick so I can upgrade to my Python, which I've always been dreaming of, what's the best way of doing that? And somebody mentioned, I think it was Dan Smith, or uh, one of Human, um, who mentioned the Road to Riches concept, which is a local trade... not a local exploration route that nets you some money from systems that aren't particularly far apart. So it's a known route, it's a known thing to do. It was posted on Reddit, um, I can give you the name of the guy in a second, uh, posted by Commander Viktik Schmiktik, uh, known as Golden Sour on, uh, road to on uh, Reddit. So I'm going to give it a try, see how it goes, act as a bit of a review and a bit of a how to do things and uh, hopefully make a bit of cash on the way through. So, doing it as a live stream, um, it will go to YouTube afterwards, so we'll just go as it is. There may not be a lot of talking involved, because I did a lot of talking last night. Um, I'm going to try and restrict it just to whoever pops in and chat, I will quite happily chat with. Otherwise, I'm just going to play the game and have some pretty music in the background. So, enjoy the stream, enjoy the video, uh, whatever is your flavour of watching this. And uh, yeah, enjoy. That's it. So initially, what we need to do is we have a, a set route. So if I pop down to my galactic map, or use my um, fancy dandy HCS voice packs, open galactic map, open galaxy. No, it's done. There we go. Stellar cartography. I actually forgot to fire it up as well. I forgot to um, initialize it. I usually just sort of say boost a couple of times and it sorts it all out. But let's have a look at how we can do this then. So, we need to go back to the window we long before. So the start point for this is um, HIP 14976. Now you'll see... Four, sorry, 14976. Hopefully isn't that far away. It's not bad, it's not bad. That's what, a couple hundred here? 184. That's not a that's not a long way in, in the ASP. Close galaxy map. Close galaxy map. Close galaxy map. Close galaxy map. This is going to be one of those days, isn't it? Close galaxy map. Exiting map. There we go. Close galaxy map. Leaving map. I'm going to put the microphone right next to my face for to pick anything up there. That's because there's a lot of fans on. Because, same as last night, it's damn hot! So I've um, 
if you've watched the video or the stream from last night, you'll have seen that I was taking the diamond back back to Shinrata Desra after a bit of pootling around. Raise landing gear. Retracting landing module. And that was when I was planning to do some trading. Uh, now that I'm not doing trading, I have dug out a million to one chance, the Asp Explorer that I was doing around the galaxy trip in. Because it's already catered out for exploration and there's a fairly decent ship for doing this kind of thing. Get clear and jump. Afterburners. Distancing now. Stand by. The FTL is charged and ready. Stand by. Engaging jump. No, it isn't. Jump. Engaging jump. the theory on this is, um, I wasn't aware that this was possible to do, but essentially what happens is some of the planets and systems that you explore don't necessarily all completely register as explored, or I don't know if it's something to do with the back engine simulation, back end simulation or anything like that, that means it's not particularly good at recognising what has been explored and how well it has been explored. What it is, these systems remain explorable, and you still can get a fair bit of money from a secondary exploration of a system, even if you're not the first person to actually find it. So that's the theory behind the road to riches, is that you can stay fairly close around, you have a, a set map of places you can go to, and don't have to keep randomly jumping and scooping to try and find something that's not been found. Jump. Engaging jump. Um, apparently it can be quite lucrative. A few million uh, credits, if not a couple of hundred million. One person said that they were upwards of a billion, or a couple of billion, um, in credits just from doing this route. I don't know if I'll do the entire route, I'll see how it goes. But we'll see. Scoop because I have got enough fuel to get to my location without having to worry about all that stuff. The only thing I'll say at this point is I can't seem to activate my uh, thing, so let's just make sure my fire groups are set properly. No, they are. Preparing for jump. Now when it's switched on, we're fine. I'm 
going to, um, I'm not sure, I quite enjoy flying the arts because it's a well kitted out ship for exploration. I do have a soft spot for the Diamondback as an exploration ship as well, so the, the DBX is what I used on my first exploration mission, and it was quite a nice little ship to fly, and it did a fairly good job of the exploration stuff, it was fairly nippy as far as jump ranges were concerned, it was fairly nippy as far as speed was concerned in getting around places, um, and it was good on the refueling. So it was quite a nice ship. I would use the Elizabeth Requiem to uh, explore around, but um, I haven't kitted that properly out for exploration yet. It was kind of built as a hybrid exploration, well, kind of hybrid long range jump um, combat ship. Jump. Jumping. So it's not fully kitted out, and I can't bother sitting around and trying to get that done at the moment. So I just thought I'd dig out the ASP, dust her off wonder about. The downside to that unfortunately is that this ship isn't particularly well armed. It has two pulse lasers on the front. It's the default. I think I have given it some beefy shields, but not anything major. Jumping to light speed. Engaging jump drive. Jumping. It's an unpopulated system, Unexplo well, a populated system, but it's unexplored, which is interesting. Open system map. System map. Now, apparently, what we're looking for is one, two, three, four. One six seven four seven. Yep, 
Nope, wrong system. Dipstick. System map. System cartography. Right, so there we go. This looks like promising stuff right there. So there's one, two, three, four, five. It recommends going in the seven first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One jump in and we're already doing loop of shame. Open system map. System map. Cool system map. Exiting map.
open system map? System cartography. Close system map. Leaving map. Message from chat there saying that um, Fiery Toad is coming online to make millions from exploration. I was wondering if he's doing the same thing that I'm doing. And that there, um, Commander Sam Isham is coming online, that would be Fiery Toad himself. Galaxy map. Stellar cartography. One six seven oh nine. Closest close galaxy map. Closing map. Jump. Engaging jump. should be a single jump from this point. Open system map. System map. So planet three here. Closing system map. Closing map. D63. Open Galaxy map. Stellar cartography. Just think of all those places, those 
faraway, unreachable corners of the galaxy, the uncharted areas of space. Close galaxy map. Closing map. Jump. Engaging jump drive. Preparing for jump. System map. System cartography. I wonder which one this one is. Close system map. Exiting map. So, one of the things obviously being discussed last night was the Thargoid, um, Thargoid question. Now that we have Thargoids in the game semi-officially, I would say officially, but um, I always have, I always reserve a modicum of doubt for how things in this game are going to progress. Um, I suppose because part of me kind of hopes that rather than following the, the, the linear progression of assumption of Thargoid in, in incursion into the galaxy, 
which has been on the table for the last couple of years, um, and just straight, just being a straightforward. Thargoids are coming. Here are Thargoids. Thargoid, Thargoids encounter. Thargoids beat us up. Type of scenario. That there will be a couple of twists in there as well. It would be interesting to see if these perhaps are not the Thargoids, or are something related to the Thargoids, or that somebody that knows the Thargoids, or it's something different. Because I don't know whether it's a mechanic of the game or not, but they haven't been overtly hostile to us so far. They've done things that have potentially caused damage to us, but not in any way that you can take as being particularly offensive. Like they have like the the so called viruses that were kicking around the stations when the unknown artifacts came along, um, and the unknown probes and so on that were all dragged into space stations and they all started failing. Is more to do with perhaps not knowing the technology that was brought on board and a perhaps an accidental effect that no one was really that familiar with. They haven't done anything over towards us. They've scanned us, they've looked at us, they've pulled us out of hyperspace and then had a loop round. Has that been a communication attempt? Or is that them checking us out? We don't know. And this is this is what I mean. There is some still at this stage some ambiguity about it. We have been overtly hostile towards them because certain players have attacked their ships. Um, especially with the, the thing where they seem to be refueling on the barnacles. So, they've got more of a reason to kind of say, well, fuck you humans, what do you think you're playing at? We're just trying to say hello, and uh, show you that we're here, and that we're doing stuff, and get about, go about our business, and you're just getting in our, in our grill and pissing us off. So they've got more of a right to turn around and say, oh, you bastards, fuck you, than we have to say to them, how dare you come back into our space, you son of a bitch. I've done it again. No, Paul, shit. What I would give to hear Brian Blessed say that. If you listen to HGS voice packs, money would be given. Um, but yeah, so the, the, I'm hoping there's going to be a couple of twists in there. Is it going to be out and out hostility? Is it going to be communication attempts? And so on and so forth. We don't know. All I know is that they're out there, they've been identified as the Thargoids, we all knew that was going to happen in the first place, but what's going to happen next? We don't know, because we just don't know. What's next? Open galaxy map. Stellar cartography. Another HIP planet. 25166. <coughs> A couple of jumps again, I think. Close galaxy map. Exiting map. Jump. Jumping to light speed. So, yeah. Um, last night, well done, Stream Graham. Um, now, this is coming to my head now because it's just popped up on the Elite Dangerous Social Group. Uh, Sean has posted this the, the Galnet post, but the Galactic Leaders Address Thargoid Discovery post, which is essentially comments from the Federal President, the Empress, Emperor, um, and Prime Minister Man, Man, Man of uh, the Alliance. And basically, they've kind of said the kind of stock responses you'd expect from these very shallow characters and not really given as much in the way of what's been happening or what's going on in the background and so on. So, I'll be quick look at it. Well, obviously... All. Jump. Engaging Boost. Thrust. Boosting now. Boost. Boosting thrust. Jump. 
jumping to light speed. Continue my discussion shortly. Um, yeah, Hudson was basically saying that the Federation has been preparing for war anyway, which is what we knew from statements made before. So, nothing new there then. Um, He's just basically been belligerent, Mr. Gung Ho Cowboy Diplomacy, i.e., non diplomacy thing. Open system map. System cartography. System map. Leaving map. Um, Emperor Rissa Lavinia Duval has said the stock response that the Empire is likely to say, which is that they're there, they're clever, they have some kind of relationship with stuff, and they can they can beat us up, basically. Which is saying, don't make assumptions. Now that's kind of a view that I would, I would ascribe to as well. Um, but essentially, she's not. She's kind of looking. It's an interesting statement, I think, because it's a moderate one, and she's proven that out of all the emperors and empresses, well, lack of empresses that we've had in the past, she's willing to kind of give them benefit of the doubt initially, and let's see what's going to happen. Um, and but she's essentially saying if they do decide they're going to try and get up on our grill, then we can deal with it. Don't worry about it. Which is essentially countering another another viewpoint. And this is this, this is essentially just stop politics. Really, one party says one thing, one party says something else. That's how it generally tends to work. Man has taken the middle ground and essentially said nothing about what they are as a military force. Um, and kind of predictably, in terms of what the Alliance has always been about in Frontier in the League. He's saying that we should keep an eye on what they can, what technology they have and how, what they can teach us and what we can learn from them, rather than how easy it's going to be to kick their arse or how much risk we're in. It's about, let's see what they've got. Can we learn from them? Which is... that's kind of the way that I would like this storyline to go. Let's... I am... I've always been an advocate of let's explore science fiction options and let's explore a storyline. And a much more engaging storyline would, rather than just we're gonna have a war, would be let's find out what they're all about. Now we did think that given some of the releases from past history and so on and past lore that this is what we've already done. Open galaxy map. Stellar cartography. But this was contradicted by some of the um, stuff that came out of. I'm going to type this in. That link is sector J R W C one dash fifteen. Locked. Closed system map. Closing map. Closed system map. Leaving map. Uh, yeah, but much more interesting. We thought that the Frontier First Encounters ending had said that the Alliance had made contact with 
the Thargoids and that we had some relations with them and some discussions with them and then they kind of couldn't find any common ground and bugger off. This apparently now is not the case. So we need to see where this is going to go. I mean, are, are we are now having the first contact with them that we've had for about 200 years, I think it is. Uh, 150 years, because it's 3150 odds was the last time we actually saw them. We heard about them in 3250, but nothing came of it, basically. Contrary to what we were actually always believing for the last 15 years. So essentially, where's it going to go? We don't know. Jump. Preparing for jump. Um, statements from the Federation would seem to state that they're going to kick. The Federation is going to basically be out there to kick their ass. And we've, if I remember rightly, all of the destroyed ships and all of the combat regions that have had something to do with the so-called Thargoid race have always been federal ships. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly, but it always seemed to me that everything to do with the Thargoids or the incurring unknown artifacts and unknown probes and everything that we to pick up was all coming from Federation sources. So it's just a matter of seeing what's going to happen next. If anything's going to happen, the Federation's either going to kick off a war, um, which may f we may find would be a federal war. Would the Thargoids actually see there being any difference between, th between Federation and Empire and Alliance and Independent? Or would they essentially see it as humanity is bad? Now, can they tell the difference between human ships? Jump. Jump. Federal ships all have a particular design, and this is one of the things that Frontier has put into this game from the start, is that there are particular designs for particular factions. You have your Imperial style designs. And you have independent designs and you have federal designs. Do the Thargoids understand, or do the aliens slash Thargoids understand that there are differences between the factions? The different factions have different types of ships. If you're flying a federal ship, if you fly a federal gunship or a corvette, or anything that carries a federal logo on it, are you are you a prime candidate for being kicked up, for being ass kicked in no uncertain terms? It's an interesting one, isn't it? And we don't know. And this is where the story can go. If it's going to be a particularly simplistic way that oh, humanity is bad, therefore humanity must die, then that's a slight disappointment. Open system map. System map. So A5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Close system map. Closing map. Um, if they take it to if they take it to that extent, then I would hope there'd be some more depth in it after that point. So, would there be further actions happening? Would there be th further options that would go on from that? Would it just be a matter of there are going to be wars in this area, there are going to be fights in this area? Would it be another version of combat zones? Would it become alien combat zones? High intensity combat zones uh, would possibly be there alongside thar high intensity Thargoid combat zones and stuff like that. So, we're looking at sector by sector combat if that's the case. Otherwise, we're looking at incursions possibly happening through the entirety of populated space, which is the overgeneralization. And I kind of I kind of don't think they're going to do that. Some of the press release stuff they did through E3 um, stated that they're not, there's not going to be Thargoid war through the entirety of the map. There will be zones, there will be areas where it's all going to kick off, but there will be areas where you can still carry on your original Elite gaming, or Elite Dangerous gaming, sorry, and carry on from there. So, we'll just have to wait and see. I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of potential to do something interesting with this. And I'm hoping that's what they do. Open system map. System map. Five. Confirm. All. Close system map. Exiting map.
paint rubbing off my ship there. Oh, it's disappointing. Same shape every side. Interesting. System map. System cartography. Close system map. Closing map. Oh dear, this will be a bit of a trip. So where does it go? Where where is this Thargoid plotline gonna take us? What is the scripted story that Frontier have plotted out for this situation? I made it clear last night that my preference would be to shake things up a bit. Give us a a unique perspective on things, rather than having your average kind of science fiction kind of story where you have aliens out there doing stuff and we don't get on with them and all that kind of stuff. Have them kick our asses. You know, take it into a negative, take it to a dark place. Take it to a place that isn't all shiny and light. I mean, I know that the whole Federation Empire war anyway isn't particularly bright, but it's cliched. I have always said that the Federation versus Empire situation in this game is cliched. It's ripped straight out of Star Wars and Star Trek and all that kind of stuff. Which is ironic, because I've kind of heard lately, um, and was discussed last night, that Mr. Braben isn't keen on that kind of environment. He's not keen on the Star Trek style of alien, or even Star Wars style of alien, where the majority of people are bipedal humanoid who will understand English at the drop of a hat, or may speak a foreign language to you, but they'll understand your speech. And that's fair enough. We take it to a place where we're not doing what we expect. We have an alien race out there, hopefully, hopefully, that we have absolutely fuck all in common with. We have absolutely nothing that we can build a relationship on. Um, which was kind of the concept that they had for the, the so-called Alliance content, contact, sorry, um, in 3252, whatever it was meant to be. So, if we build on that, then if there's nothing we can actually get together, or there is some kind of basic misunderstanding or basic lack of commonality in the Thargoids, I do take a belligerent aspect to it. Take it to the extreme, take it to the logical conclusion of that, and kick us out. Kick our asses, make us run away. Take it that we can't get back in, we, we can't take our systems back. We can't beat them. They do infiltrate the core and win, and put us out. And if it's the Federation that, that caused the problem, then the Federation essentially is destroyed. Um, that's going to upset that whole car slightly and break the status quo. Because when you're writing stories, when you write a storyline, you break the status quo. You don't have business as usual. You don't have this kind of ongoing situation. I mean, we've now got a federation that has endured for, what, is it nearly a thousand years? In one form or the other? I think it's about 1800 years or something. Sorry, 800 years or something it's, it's been in the form it's in. Um, and it harks all the way back to the kind of American alliances and all that things that went off, or that are happening now. And it's kind of grown from that kind of concept. So, shake it up. Kill that. Destroy Earth. Or not, maybe not destroy Earth, but have it annexed. Have it lost. Let's lose Earth for a bit. We don't have access to the core system. We cannot get through the hyperspace barrier into there. They come, they kick us out, they block us. Every time we try to jump into the solar system, they intercept us and kick us back out again. Um, blockade the whole damn thing. 
that would be fun to me. That would be something different. And then what we do is we then try to rebuild. We try to understand the alien. We try to then try and find a common ground where we can say, right, we can't kick your ass militarily, but can we do it scientifically? Can we? Is the Mikoi thing going to work again, or can we actually do it sociologically? Can people at the Canon Research Group and the people who've been looking into all these alien artifacts use that to build a kind of language understanding? Can we use those things? Can we use the experience we've had so far, the puzzles we've solved, things we've done, to try and build a way to communicate with the Thargoids and try and find that common ground that will give us access back to the part of the galaxy that we lived in? Um, and as I said last night, and as I've said before, that would be an interesting concept to allow Frontier to do that thing that we keep on asking them to do, which is give us planetary landings on atmospheric planets. They are reluctant to do this because they think it'd be a hell of a lot of work to do. And they're right, it would be a lot of work to do. It's a huge undertaking. And it's made far more complicated by the concept of having to have planetary landings on atmospheric planets with cities. Populated cities. Populated open air cities. Difficult to do. Very difficult to do. Um, but not undoable, and that's the thing. We discussed last night that there are procedural ways of doing it. Use draw distance, use um, point of view, use your actual area of view from, from a particular character to render only one area. You have issues then with the draw distance being too short. How do you create that? How do you do an, an open area? So the way to get around that is you limit it. You limit it to space stations. You can only walk around in space stations and see things on space stations because you have corridors. You don't have to have a wide pan of view. You have forward and backwards and then your corridor. You may have communal areas like bars or um, open fields or like the, the rings on the planet. The, the rings on the space stations, for example, can be that kind of thing. Um, and that's your most open bit. Now they've proved they can do that kind of thing with procedural generation of crowds in Planet Coaster. So there's no reason why they can't do it to a small scale. But doing it on the scale of having to populate Earth or Lave or Achenar or anywhere like that where you have millions or billions of people with established cities, um, established towns, established roadways. Earth will be a nightmare because it is an established area that we do have a particular map of. We know where all the cities are, we know where everything is. We know that as far as FFE is concerned, London's where London was, and New York is where New York was, and Paris is where Paris was. All that kind of stuff, it's still all there. Um, so that's the, the hardest bit to try and do. So don't do it. Have the Thargoids kick us out of the core, and then we go to the, say, Colonia or somewhere else, and um, we populate there while we're actually exiled there and there's no way we can actually get access to these populated planets that we used to have that is where Frontier can devote some time towards trying to get this procedural generation of cities and cityscapes from um, they've got time to work on that and in the meantime the storyline can progress they can start to incrementally say right we can do planetary landings on, populate, on um, open air planets but you can't get out your ship they're stage one so you can do the same as what you can do on um, atmospheric planets um, and populate it with players only. So you can actually have your population grow from players alone and then you can start gradually building out um, planetary bases and then populate them, populate the space stations and gradually move up towards getting all that stuff expanded out. Incremental development. And it builds on the concepts that Frontier has done already, which is incremental development and building a framework and then populating that framework with more stuff. And once you've got the basics in place, you can then look at Bolt and stuff on that place. I do wonder whether or not the model they've used to build this game on at the moment is robust enough or expandable enough to allow us to do some of that stuff, and that may be why they're kind of struggling with it. But I'm hoping that they've kind of either thought about this kind of stuff in the first place and the framework is there to build on so they've hopefully built it like a modular expansion concept um, so that rather than having so rather than having everything bunched in one pile of code you have a library that contains all the information about such and such they put a lot of forward planning into ships the interiors of ships are properly detailed um, and as far as Frontier have said 
they have designed the interiors of the ships to to a level where they could, in theory, populate the interiors with real stuff. So, in theory, that's a workable idea. I think that's somewhere it could realistically go. Open up at this stage, I am on the verge of calling this to a halt. I've had my hour. Um, we've dealt with the Thargoids, which was unexpected. Kind of wax lyrical for a bit about that as well. So we'll call this the Thargoid discussion. <laughs> I'm going to try and see if there's a place I can land in this system once so I've uh, done what I've just done, which is scan that. It's a high metal content, which I can't land on. open the system map, or will we go to the next system? I'll do the next system, it's not that far. Uh, it's the third one. So, open galaxy map. Open galaxy map. Stellar cartography. What are we looking at now? L-Y-N-C-I-S sector C1-11 Oh wait a minute IRW IR-W C1-11 Close system Close galaxy map Leaving map Right. Jump. Engaging jump drive. Engaging jump. System map. System map. So I'm going to do both of them, and then I'm going to go there to land. Close system map. Leaving map.
So I'm hopeful for the future. I'm hopeful for the future of the game storyline. I'm hopeful that the Thargoids are going to get used in a role that isn't just a a rehash of previous ideas. Um, I hope they're going to be dangerous with them rather than just same old, same old. The alleged tome of the Thargoids is something that I'm very interested in. I have no intention of being able to see it. I have no likelihood to be able to see it. That would just be a pipe dream. Um, but I will say that if anybody from Frontier is watching this and is listening to this and is of a mind to say, yeah, let's do it, I will sign whatever NDAs you want me to sign. And I will say nothing. I will take the secrets to my grave. Just give me a look. Go on. Please. But, yeah, I mean, I, th I think... Do I believe that there is a, a tome of phone books worth thick of Thargoid information? Um, frankly, no, I don't think I do. Open system map. System cartography. I'm on the wrong one, look. What a twat. Try that again. I still say this game is absolutely bloody gorgeous. That's such an immersive night sky or starscape. I just love that it's interactive as well because it's not just your average skybox where it's just this is a program. And if, if you don't know anything about the game program, a skybox is essentially the simplest version of doing a kind of environment where you play your game in is you have a box or a sphere around your game area which is static and is internally mapped with a huge graphic or a procedurally generated. Um, image which depicts the environment you're actually playing and this one is amazingly rendered because it is completely generated from the actual locations of each dot in the sky so each star there is an actual star in the game that you can visit and in theory if you were able to do it you could click on the screen at any one of those little dots and you could target it and go there that's how amazing thought behind this game's immersiveness has been and I think it's just very impressive all the nebulas that you see the little galaxies that you can see on the screen that one over there in the middle there in the middle roughly is a galaxy which is actually there that bright star that nebula you can go to that nebula you can go to that nebula you can go to those little bright dots there it's all just amazing Slow down. That's not a loop of shame, this is a loop of anger because that just wasn't necessary. I was well away from that. Yeah, so that's missing one. So that's interesting. So open system, open system map, open system map, system cartography. Close system map. Exiting map. So 
I'll go, I'll tag this one, and then I'll tag its moon and land on it. And that takes us... That completes six systems out of 200... out of... 290, I think. I'm actually thinking I could cut this down and just do all the athletics. In Microsoft Flight Sim, we used to have the virtual cockpit was introduced in one of the uh, later versions, and I could never get on with it because it just seemed to oddly, it just moved weird. It moved strangely and it didn't seem to sit very well with me. But this is the same concept, really. Just I think perhaps done slightly smoother, and it, I am actually quite enjoying it. And I did enjoy it right from the start when, it, when, when the game first came out. The ED tracker, or ED tracker, and things like the track IR, and the track hats, and Oculus Rift, and so on, that do give you that kind of 3D movement experience. Add a hell of a lot to the game. I mean, this head movement thing is brilliant. I love it. The ED tracker is a wonderful piece of kit, and as I would say to anyone, um, get one if you can. But hold off, because they're demoing the wireless version at LaveCon next weekend. Um, that's something to keep an eye out for as well. If you're going to LaveCon, have a great time. If you're going to LaveCon, give them all a big hug from me over there. Give Fozza and and uh, John and Chris and Karen and everyone else who's there. Just give them all a great big hug and a great big smile. And drink a drink for me. Have a pint for me. Um, go away. And have a pint for Neil as well. Have a pint of cider for have a pint of cider for Neil Davidson as well. Um, Lavecon two years ago, we um, we sat all night chewing the fat and drinking the drink, and I had a fantastic time with him that evening. And uh, yeah, piled him to bed at some point. And he sadly died uh, last year. It was a blow. So, uh, yeah, sink a pint for him, sink a pint for me, and remember us fondly. Maybe next year. But, yeah, um, a few people are going to be there. I think HS voice parts are going to be there. Um, The Oculus Rift guys are going to be there. I'm not sure if Artemis is going to be there this year. Special Effect obviously are there this year because they're the, the kind of go-to charity for um, any elite convention. And quite rightly so. Shall I land in that crater? Yeah, let's land in that crater. Land in the pip of the orange. Um, yeah, and as I said, uh, ED Tracker guys are going to be there demoing the wireless version. So rather than have this cable stretching across my head, down my arm, and into the computer, it'll be completely hands-free. So I'll actually be able to get away from my desk while I'm playing the game and not lose control of the ship, which will be amazing. And I won't have to keep plugging the damn thing in and out. I'm going to plunk it right in the middle of this crater.
deploy landing gear. Deploying landing modules. Okay, so there we are, we're down, we're safe. The sun is high, the planet's high. Wow, that looks lovely. Lovely! So, I'm going to call that a day, I'm going to call that the end of this video. Um, to anybody who's been watching in chat and watching in the video, thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. And for anybody who watches this on YouTube, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and please give me a like, a follow, subscribe, whatever it is you do on whatever platform you're on to uh, show, your support for the, show your support for the stream and for the channel. Um, I'll be back, if not before, I'll be back next Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. UK time for Dangerous Mondays. I may stream another session of Lego Batman 3 at some point this week, but we'll see. Um, other than that, I'll see you around. Take care, everyone. Uh, Fly safe.